Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Good afternoon to you. Welcome to the show. My name is Danilo Aquisto and this is Win a Home on Afternoon Express. Now, as you know, South Africa's premier interior design reality competition is proudly brought to you by Private Property as we follow the journey of three design duos who are nearly complete in transforming cluster homes at the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate from white box spaces into lavish homes. Due to a schedule change because of cricket broadcasts, today is the first of a double dose of Win a Home this week. Tomorrow, we'll be back again to reveal those finished spaces, and that's pretty exciting. Before we discover our design duo's latest challenge, however, let's recap what happened in the previous challenge. Previously on Winner Home, our design duo served up kitchens to suit all tastes. From a minimalist artistic to urban chic and a bit of glam, these kitchens could not be more different from each other. Our judges, including architect guest judge Jonathan Anstey, had the tough task of assessing the designs and their feedback was pretty spicy. From a wobbly stairway to heaven. Okay, no need for words there. To a scathing burn. The nicest thing about this kitchen is the cake. Uh. <laughs> Overall, the judges were impressed by the design features of the various kitchens and chose Team VC as the winners of this challenge. I like the look of their kitchen. Nice. I... Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> when they announced the winner wasn't us, I just love it. Yeah. Um, we hope that the curse of the double challenge win doesn't fall on us. Yeah. So hopefully we can get a third win. Our design viewers have big dreams of winning this competition, but they all share one little problem. Money! With some lavish spending in the first challenges and still two spaces left to design and decorate, Team Habitat have 68,000 Rand left in their cash budget, Team VC have 64,000 Rand remaining, and truly feeling that pinch, Team Health and Leisure are left with just 48,000 Rand in their cash budget. Money is definitely way too tight to mention, and all our design viewers will have to stretch those Randellas to make it through the next challenge. The budget is looking very swack, it's looking very bad, but we will make sure we finish this. Yeah, she's, she's, she's the finance. Now the purse is closed. Budget, so. <laughs> <laughs> Our budget is tight. It's been tight since, I think, after the master bedroom. So it's been tight, so we've learned how to After work. the bathroom. After the bathroom, <laughs> it's been tight. So now we know how to work with a tight budget and how to keep it, how to Spread it out as thinly as possible and get the most out of that mm. money. Yeah. We're working on a shoestring budget and we literally have to create magic with that budget. We'll make it work. We are miracle workers after all. <laughs> <laughs> Hello contestants and welcome to your next and penultimate challenge on Winner Home Season 4. For this challenge, each of you is going to have to think outside of the box and outside of the home. For this challenge, you'll be designing and decorating the patio and garden. How do you design a garden? Uh, I think it's going to be an interesting uh, mm -hmm. challenge because if, I've never done a, a garden. Like landscaping, it's something different out yeah. of my way. I feel like this is a challenge where everybody can just go crazy. And I encourage everybody to go crazy. You can go Except crazy with your me. plants. <laughs> Abia can hang a chandelier wherever he can. So just go crazy, guys. Garden, garden, garden time. <laughs> it's exciting. We were starting to feel claustrophobic being locked up in the house, decorating room by room. It's time to go outside. We're super excited. Yeah, get outside, get our hands dirty. Yeah, dig into the ground, go gorilla with this game. So we're excited. Each duo will get their very own green thumb. We'll be allocating a landscaping company to each design team to turn the bare rubble outside into award-winning patios and gardens. But for this challenge, there's a twist. Not only are you competing for a challenge win, but also, 
The biggest reward on Winner Home thus far. The winning design duo of this challenge will walk away with 10,000 Rand added to their budget for the final challenge. Oh, so we need to win it. Yeah, we need that 10,000 Rand extra. The 10,000 is a game changer. It helps as yeah, fulfill everything that we still need to do Absolutely. in the house. Like the lounge. The lounge. Um, so we weigh up our options. Do we take the risk now and spend a lot on the garden to win that 10,000? So that you can carry on that dream yeah. in the rest of the house. So we're going quite big with the garden. At this point, thinking of that 10,000, it gives me chest pains because if we get it, it will make a huge difference. So we'd like a million rand to our budget. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Team Habitat clearly have their eye of Africa on that 10,000 Rand prize and are taking the gamble by allocating a generous 40,000 Rand for their remaining budget for the outside area. Team VC are being more cautious with 24,000 Rand plus their kitchen challenge win bonus. Team House and Leisure clearly have taken their budget woes into account and only allocated 15,000 Rand. Thankfully, to help these gardens truly bloom, we assigned a landscape expert to each duo. Hi, sure. Vanessa. Hi, Musa. <laughs> Thank you for coming through. From O oh, Multi Group, we just compiled some images just to show you what kind of mood, feel we're going for for the garden space and patio. So we've got, obviously, this is the beginning. It's still a Sahara Desert, just dry. sand. It's dry. <laughs> so dry. So we want to sizzle it up, add some plants, some border. Yeah, because we started. Border. Definitely. Because yeah. we started with running a pool. And so that's a bit out of the budget. <laughs> so we thought, how do we incorporate some water into the whole mm. garden space? Mm. So definitely we'd want a big pond. Absolutely. As large as we can go. Yeah, lots of bridges. <laughs> you know, just things that keep it interesting. Because mm. as you can see, what we're standing over is a fireplace. Yes. 16th century. 18th century. 1816, <laughs> other way, it's so sweet. Yeah. So, you know, we just want to make the outdoor feel like an extension of the indoors for this area, the patio. So listening to what you guys wanted, yeah. um, I've actually just designed a water feature around the patio and we have a seating area over there by the corner and then we'll be having lawn all around and we'll be having some walkways and bridges to just to create that intricate movement within the gardens and also the plants which will be indigenous you know just to give you that feel and they'll have a lot of color with this kind of garden i think you're going to achieve a more tranquil environment as you want um, that tranquil and serene with the water. Um, I think that is the, the major one that we're going to do. And then definitely we're going to try bring in some lighting, special lighting in the outside area. What's the point of being outside if you can't also see the razzle and dazzle of the sun mm. bouncing off a chandelier? Yeah. So watch out, there might be another chandelier. Or two. <laughs> or three. <laughs> Team Habitat is very fantastic, you know. Um, they're a very nice duo. They're very energetic. And the ideas are actually flamboyant, you know, and sometimes you just have to reel them in with some of the ideas. But yeah, they're very nice duo to work with. Team VC meets with Craig from The Friendly Plants to exchange ideas. He will draw up a design and later reveal the master plan. Meanwhile, one half of Team House and Leisure is meeting with their landscaper from Acton Gardens. I'm meeting with Sarah and I think it's an amazing thing that she's on board because she's educating me about a lot of things I didn't know regarding landscaping. So it's quite helpful having her on board. There's quite a large space here being a corner stand. So we need to look at some focal points, something that could attract the viewer's attention. This space here, we've got an aloe and quite a large open window. So what did you have in mind for the feature in this corner? What we had planned for this area is to remove this aloe, probably fit it somewhere, but then we need to have like a pond happening here, which is gonna be one of our focal points. Okay, um, and this pond, uh, any specific shape? Are we looking more sort of clean lines, contempt, or are we going more organic and gentle? The idea is to keep like everything very organic and gentle as we've been doing throughout the house. 
I'm um, thinking your water feature idea here, something that's sort of flowing from space to space with a bit of a back wall that some feature as a feature wall. That's going to be really lovely. And I think since we have one of those walls that's part of like the development, it will be nice to match that wall to the wall that's going to be that side for the two sides to balance. You mentioned that you want to have a walkway coming from the road through to the patio. What did you have in mind for that? We're hoping to achieve that with a bit of your help, of course, because it's going to be a bit of a DIY. What we want to do is have sort of like organic shapes and then in different sizes running into the patio. And then on the other side of the house, we're going to have a sculpture, but that's still like, it still needs to be finalized because we have two options to select from. Can you have a look at the plan? Sure, let's take a look. What we've got in this space here is the, a very gentle organic water feature as discussed but keeping the area surrounding it quite clean and uh, contemporary with very small sort of topiary balls just to bring some sort of added greenery to the cladding brought in from the, from the front feature wall. Just keep in mind, whatever sculpture you go with is going to affect the final product of the entire space. So I hope you've got something in mind here. Thank you so much, Sarah. We're hoping to get out of this a winning garden. <laughs> Now that our design viewers have started work on their gardens, there's no doubt that those empty spaces they started with all those weeks ago have become beautiful homes. One of those you could be calling home. Now, if you want your chance to win a choice of one of the three units decorated by our design duos, enter the grand prize competition right now because you have just over two weeks left to do so. The finished home is valued at more than three million rand and comes complete with luxurious finishes by Plascon and Caesar Stone, top quality bathroom fixtures by Gibberit and Grower, as well as premier kitchen appliances by Grundig. To enter, simply visit privateproperty.co.za and vote for your favorite design duo. You will also automatically be entered into the bi-weekly giveaway of the Grundig Black Glass Door Combi Fridge, valued at just on 9,000 Rand. Still ahead on Winner Home, however, our design duos put the petal to the metal, and they go on a haughty cultural shopping spree. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon. Designed for life. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, our design contestants are currently in their penultimate challenge of the competition and the units they've been decorating have become rather like their babies. They've nurtured the spaces, clothed them in great furniture and finishes and cultivated beautiful homes. So now that the homes need fabulous gardens, it's rather fitting that everyone pays a visit to the garden pavilion. We're at Eckert's and we're looking for plants and they're telling us we can only have indigenous plants which is fitting because we've been looking for local design and now it makes us have local plants. So for, so for our hedge, I was thinking of these Chinese laurels. What do you think about them? These are lovely. I think we need to get help on these ones. Actually, he's waiting. Hey, can I yes. <laughs> What's the question? We're looking at the, like these trees for yeah. our hedge, Very but nice. then we're quite concerned that they might not be indigenous. They're definitely not indigenous. Why? <laughs> I don't know. But don't worry, I think I've, I have an alternative here. We're going to show you the forest bell bush, the frillinia. Flowers, it will do what you want and it fits your brief. Okay, let's check it out. Unfortunately, they're either too expensive or not indigenous, and Sapo is quite tired. <laughs> Right, so these are the frillinia, the honey bell bush that I told you about. So they're going to work for you because, well, firstly, they're water-wise, they're indigenous, and they also flower, so they attract all the bees, so they, like, they pollinate a friendly, which is what you want. And actually, most importantly, they're going to fit into the design that you want to do. So I think this is actually the one that you want to use. I love that they'll add a touch of colour to our garden. Perfect. So I think you are going to like them. Thank you so much, Wayne. Yes, you saved us and our budget. <laughs> <laughs> 
Brilliant. Mental meeting with Amanda. Sure, we didn't win the kitchen challenge. <laughs> We're a little bit nervous meeting Amanda. I'm sure you've heard about the kitchen challenge. I have indeed. Mm. <laughs> These judges are like Katy Perry. They're hot, then they're cold, they're yes, and they know. <laughs> Oh. We don't know anymore. This time around, they were like, we're lacking a lot of our personality. I'm confused, to be sure. honest, because we've gone from too much razzle-dazzle to extreme and minimalism, if you like, and now there's not enough of your personalities coming through. I think it's time we attack the gardens like gorillas and go wild, <laughs> roaring wild. <laughs> what are we looking at? <laughs> um, uh, can I expect to see a, a tiger or a leopard? Sure. sure. If we can get our hands on one. <laughs> There'll definitely be one. It will coerce the judges in the right direction. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past you. <laughs> we'll scare them away. <laughs> Let's start with the furniture. Mm. So, so far we were thinking of something of this nature like in terms of having seating that we reupholster in Balgatex. Right. We're upcycling furniture, second-hand furniture. Let's make that a bit larger. Oh, yeah. And as, <laughs> as I'm sure you're probably sound. looking at using water-wise plants. Oh, yes. absolutely. It's a, <laughs> it's a feature. Bird-friendly plants that save water. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So we've been looking for indigenous plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keeping it probably South African or African. That's yeah. great. I was actually going to suggest using indigenous plants. Yeah. Aloes. Aloes. Cacti. 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 Like some of these ones here. Yes. We great. definitely love the... I think that's the indigenous grass. Yes, I love that too. It's yeah. nice as a filler. Like just to create, you know, a green... You want to create a lush... Yes. Full garden. Lovely garden. Oh, yes. 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 Okay, lighting is going to be important. Sure, I was about, I was afraid to actually bring it up. Can I just have one more? <laughs> no, 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 just one more. Amanda, just one more. But even if I say no, you don't obey me anyway. You go ahead. Okay, but I'll send you the picture like we did with this one. <laughs> just and if I it, don't approve it, you'll do it I'll anyway. I'll surprise you. Just to surprise you. <laughs> just to surprise We've got to bring you. some of that we spark. We could possibly up. consider it. Okay. Mm. Amanda's on our side. Yes, and we're going to go hard and we're going to just put back a little bit of attitude into the home. A lot of attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Looking through the garden and we find that they have more hardscaping things which are like pots, pavers. Everything that we literally need for the garden. So you know that we are kind of like doing the concrete jungle theme for the outdoor garden. You want the simple garden? low maintenance because of our client as a single guy. So what we want is an outdoor living space. Um, we want our client to be able to live outdoors and do what they need to do. That's why we've included an outdoor dining area as well as our um, fire area. Yeah. All right, so then what you need to do is look at some other accessories. So, you know, when you come to the nursery, it's not only about plants. It can very definitely be all, everything you need to make this outdoor room because your garden is actually an extension of your home. It's not just a garden, it's somewhere where you actually have to live. So I think you guys are on the right track. Trellising is something you can maybe consider. I think you can look at doing something fun with a trellising on the walls or a screening. So start playing with ideas on that because it's quite economical and it's an easy way to add a focal point. A quick one, can we paint them? Because if I think maybe if we add a little bit of color, then they'll look nice. So you see, everybody else looks at trellising standard as it comes. So it takes somebody with a bit of vision to say, what about if we just change it up? <laughs> and it takes someone with Team VC vision. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. I like Perfect. that idea. When you've done this, why don't you also think of using, you said concrete jungle. Yeah. So what about doing like some of the concrete balls or some pavers or just something that's not what people are going to expect to find in your style. Lovely. You know, just take it a bit outside the box and into the garden. Awesome. Let's get these. So we're doing the Heartlander collaboration and what we've been looking for is outdoor furniture that will actually be weatherproof and weather resistant as well. We're actually looking for outside furniture for our patio and we like this bench as we walked in. And we love the classic take on the wood and the simplicity, which is so elegant, and we think it would be fitting for the space. Glad you like it. Philip and I are, are passionate about Scandinavian design and sort of timeless classics. This particular bench is inspired a bit by Urkel's Love Bench. Um, it's got a coziness, it's made for two, and we, we really feel like we've made something that's going to last forever. Uh, for us, 
design has to be timeless and classic for that reason. You want something that's going to look good 50 years from now, not, not necessarily just for a trend. Can we have it without the armrests? Absolutely. Um, the armrests we actually sort of encourage for, I suppose, an area where you'll be lounging. If you're going to sit at a table, uh, perhaps you don't want the armrest, so you can slip in and out of it. Um, it really depends on the function. Are we able to stain the natural wood into maybe this colour? Uh, absolutely, we offer it in uh, black, chocolate brown as this colour is, and natural. really depends on, on your background. I think the furniture is going to suit the space because firstly it is wood and we've been trying to incorporate wood throughout the house just to warm each and every single space up. So I believe that it's an, it will be like an amazing addition. I'm going to ask Tiana and just find out the suggestions of how to style so, the seats. Excellent. It's a nice meeting you guys. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Team House and Leisure's mentor, Tian, arrives at Houtlander to discuss their ideas and vision for the collaboration. Tian, we wanted to like your advice on, since we already gave him this furniture, how can we put like our signature on it? First of all, this furniture is so beautiful and the detailing is so exquisite. Um, so you don't want to distract from that too much. So whatever you do, I would advise is to enhance these beautiful pieces. I wouldn't necessarily add colour, because I think it distracts, but the wood is so beautiful and the shape is so sophisticated, I wouldn't want to mess with that too much. And we were looking at the two colour options, that one you're sitting on and this one, so we wanted you, your advice on which one do you think would... You know, I think it comes down to personal preference. I like the lighter tone um, because it shows the grain off better. Tian, we're also getting a coffee table from Heartlander and we're curious, should we have a round coffee table or a square shaped? I would consider maybe um, looking at a square shape or rectangular shape that would fill up the space um, and anchor the space a little bit as an outdoor living space opposed to small furniture kind of like scattered on the patio. So yeah, I think that would kind of group it a little bit better. And finally now getting a swan. A swan. Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> joking. Banana <What? laughs> doesn't seem to know about the swan. <laughs> but we are getting a pond mm -hmm. and we're trying to keep it quite organic and as if we found it in the space instead of a man-made one. Yeah. One of those kind of like green ponds. Okay, perfect. These gardens are definitely going to be a celebration of local flora. But after the break, we celebrate local art as one of our very own design duo's art career blossoms. Partnership with Winner Home. The best stone is Caesar Stone. Welcome back. This is hashtag win a home on Afternoon Express. Although our design duos are on a steep learning curve when it comes to landscape design, all of them come from very diverse creative backgrounds. For example, Team House and Leisure's Banele is a rising local talent in the world of visual art. And while our design duos are hard at work creating gardens, he's also competing in one of the country's most prestigious art competitions. I'm not able to help Singapore time being at the Garden Challenge because I'm at the Latelier Boot Camp and we've been preparing basically for the award ceremony which is literally the biggest art competition in South Africa. The Latelier is focused on nurturing um, or first identifying and then nurturing young talent and many of the artists that enter it become our future stars in years to come. I think we're looking for innovation, we're looking for the way in which artists are using materials to articulate different um, realities and different um, experiences. We're also looking for quality, of course, but personal expression in the works. 
We take part because this is a major event now and we consider that the fact that you promote young artists is key for this country and for the future. They, they bring freedom, they bring new ideas, they make you see the world differently, they make the world better. And so for France, that's part of our values as well. The world is changing and we want to do it with the South Africans. Vanilla is among the 10 finalists in the competition and stands a chance of winning an art residency in France. This could be an incredible boost for his career. Hello. On the screen behind you. Just think what this person is going to win. means everything to me especially coming from a small town and dreaming big and I think to dream this far and to actually achieve it it means everything to me like it means everything that you want it is possible to get. Um, regarding the win I'm very excited about it it's three months in Paris which is like a dream come true because yes. I grew up wishing to be in Paris and yeah it's happening. Excuse me your luggage? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Another duo having to get creative and artistic is Team Habitat, who visit Four Ways Paint and Hardware for some supplies to add their unique Razzle Dazzle to the garden. The budget's tight, so we are cycling a lot. So we're going to be painting a lot. It's time to do our work. Welcome, <laughs> welcome back to our store. I like where you're going with this piece that you've selected for your patio. And what we've done is we've prepared it by using Plascon's Wood Care Coating Remover for Wood. Hein, tell me, why do you use the coating remover before you start painting? Like it's sandpaper out of fashion. Well, this product is specifically formulated to work with antique pieces. So instead of using sandpaper where you'll scratch the wood or lose some of the wood grain, this allows you to remove it fast and easy and it's safe on the wood, which is most important. We really want to go for like a white... I don't know, the a, tint. A white finish on our furniture. Yes. Something that can also be okay in the sun and yeah. whether any <laughs> forms of weather, whether it be a hurricane, tornado, tsunami, we want it to be covered. Mother Nay Nay mustn't <laughs> have <laughs> any say on our furniture. Yeah. The product that I would recommend for you there would be Plascon Wood Care Exterior Water Based Varnish. Okay. This is the suede finish selection and we can tint it to a rock rose white. Okay, so it's this color here. Can you see that? What's the best way to paint something like this? Up, down, across? That's a sad. <laughs> with the grain or against the grain? <laughs> Absolutely always with the grain. The brush that you will use is a Hamilton Specialist fiberglass brush. These brushes get used to apply varnishes and oils with. Let's see. Sure. And how many, uh, what do you call it, how long do we wait between coats? Four to six hours is the drying time between coats. Okay. Sure, so we better start today. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Even just with the first coat, it's sure. like a nice wash. Absolutely. Yes. The more coats you apply, the more coverage you will get. If you want to see more wood grain, you'll apply lesser coats. We're going to apply a few. As many as possible. <laughs> yeah. We're going to finish that 20 liters. <laughs> That'll give you the best protection as well for the piece. Okay, wow. sure. Okay. Well, there you go, guys. I've done your first coat. Sure. The rest is up to you. No, thank you, Hyde. Thank you. Let's hope we can make you proud. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you will. After a productive ideas exchange with Craig from The Friendly Plant, it's time for Team VC and their mentor to see the indigenous plants he has selected. Looking for indigenous plants. <laughs> That's what we need. Green indigenous yeah. plants. Luckily, Craig is um, he's very an good expert. At what he yeah, does. he's an expert at what he does. He has a big farm, trust me. And farm. we have, I think we have an advantage from most duos by having Craig. So we need to use him in a way where like it needs to work. I hope you guys had a good walk around our plant farm. 
had a look at all the different plants that we have on offer. Uh, we've brought a selection of your plants out so that you can see them all in one place and give us a good idea of what the garden is going to look like. Craig, I also love how you've kept to the indigenous mm. um, plants that we need, but you've also found us these beautiful green luscious plants that have flowers. I mean, when I think indigenous, I think dry yeah. and aloes, and this absolutely is not that. It's beautiful and lush and vibrant, and I love that. Anna Marie, how do we bring our personalities and the personality that is in the home out into the garden? Well, I think you guys started off very well by having this imaginative owner, the person you're going to do the home for, and that you've worked out his lifestyle. What is he going to do? What is he going to do over weekends? What's he going to do in his garden? You know, and it's all those type of things that one looks at. You stay in character. We want to paint the pot plants into a vibe of African textures, like Esther Matlangu vibes, but we are not quite sure about it. So should we go for it or not? Definitely not. If it looks like a curio shop, it's ours. <laughs> Is there a way that you can maybe show me what you have in mind? Yeah, sure. Let's go to the office and we'll show you the design. Awesome. Right, go. Let's go. Anna Marie has helped us not to lose track of our concrete jungle theme. It's more European, but it has African style. So rather use pop of colors instead of like doing patterns. That would be nice. The, the way that the garden fits together and all the different elements fit together is going to give more of a wow when you look at the totality of the garden as opposed to one specific feature. Ideally, it's, it's a space that you can relax in and it's a space that you can kind of lose yourself in. And the garden itself should be a lush little concrete jungle. On site, team house and leisure's ponds and walkway with concrete pavers are taking shape as they bring their vision of an organic garden to life. Team Habitat has gone bold once more with a moat running through most of their garden space as they bring a regal and glamorous touch to their multifunctional patio. Finally, Team VC's garden has been designed with a very modern feel. It has a wow factor, but easy to maintain in keeping with the concrete jungle theme. Team VC have consistently been working with the phrase concrete jungle because it's very reflective of Joburg. While some Josie residents love living in the heart of the city amidst that urban architecture and buzz, some seek the peace and quiet of the countryside, but with easy access to city amenities. Enter the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate and they have news to share that could help you become a resident. If you've been watching Win a Home up until this point, you might be thinking to yourself, hey, I'd really like to live on an estate, but I don't have enough money. We've got great news for you then. The Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate is expanding and they've opened up a brand new development that incorporates both estate living with affordability and it's called The Village. Kent, entice us. I don't know, thank you. We're very excited about The Village. We have traditionally been selling stands within the estate and two beautiful cluster offerings, um, but we now have really well-priced, affordable walk-up, two-bedroom and three-bedroom apartments starting from 1,395,000 Rand. I think this opens the opportunity for many young couples, um, single people to get into the Eye of Africa at a really affordable price. And I think that's what's led to the overwhelming response that we're having on the village. Tell us about the homes themselves. What can future buyers expect? I think the first thing that's, that's amazing for me about the village is the very low density. Many other estates or apartment complexes, they'll very often be four-storey walk-ups and 80 to 100 units per hectare. We have a very low density of between 40 and 50 units per hectare. So the real estate sits really softly in the landscape. And I think that's one of the most appealing features of the village. I think we've gone to a great deal of trouble. Aram Lello from DHK Architects has worked and put together a very, very beautiful interior spaces. I, I think purchases coming in are going to be absolutely delighted. We have integrated Bosch appliances, beautiful choice of floor finishes, and I think it's a very, very special product. With all that you're mentioning, it almost sounds too good to be true. There must be a catch. There's no catch at all. And I think, and that's the real appeal about being able to buy into an, uh, an apartment project within this magnificent 700 hectare estate with all the facilities and all the amenities. And I think that's exactly what the attraction has been. You know, although you're living in, on this two hectare site, the village, you have the benefits of enjoying all the restaurants, the running tracks, the mountain bike tracks, our beautiful floodlit tennis courts. And there's so much more that this development has to offer other than a traditional sectional title estate. I'm sold that I'm sure everybody else is. These are gonna be snapped up like this. 
I mean, are there future plans to build something similar? Well, we've been furiously working on phase two. We've had an overwhelming response to our marketing campaign, which broke a week ago. Over 500 people have RSVP'd, which is astonishing. And uh, yes, so we are definitely planning phase two, so we, nobody's going to lose out. Thank you, Kent. Well, you see, living on an estate isn't too far out of our reach. So for more details on this development and the future ones to come, go to iofafrica.co.za. From a great property development for young adults just launching their careers or new families to property developments for those in their golden years looking for relaxed, tranquil living, after the break we get some property advice for retirement estates. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon. Designed for life. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. A warm welcome back to Winner Home on Afternoon Express, exclusively on SABC3. Private Property has teamed up with Afternoon Express to provide you with advice on the different aspects of property on estates. Within Southern Africa, South Africa has the highest proportions of older population with more than one in eight persons, around 5.6 million, aged between 50 and over, and nearly 7%, 2.9 million, aged between 60 and above. So many of these older people are choosing to live in retirement villages and developers are scrambling to keep up with the huge demand for this type of development. Joining us once again today is Carol Reynolds, North Durban Area Principal for Pam Golding Properties. Welcome back to our loft. Thank you, nice to be here. So why is there such a demand for retirement villages? Well, I think it is largely to do with the aging population, but also retirement villages are bridging a gap between downscaling from your old family home and moving into a traditional old age home. Okay. What developers have done now is they've created these beautiful lifestyle security estates with extra benefits, which are the healthcare benefits. So people are moving into retirement villages when they're younger and they're enjoying this beautiful, secure, amazing lifestyle. Mm. And then they've got the advantage of having the healthcare as and when they need it. Okay, because I always had a fear, like I want to retire at 30. <laughs> I'm gonna try and see if I can retire at 30 and put that stamp on my, uh, on my sort of like yes. life story. Um, but I mean, what kind of other homes can you get? Because I always worried that retiring at 30 means I'm gonna have to go live in a hospital bed. No, this is the beauty of these new villages. So they're young, trendy, they're contemporary, the architecture's beautiful. Um, so they really are about creating lifestyle estates for the older population. Okay. And then with that, you've got all the medical care and the facilities. And there's certain factors that are um, distinct. Mm. Things like you need to have simplexes, so there's no stairs. And the paving and the landscaping is all crafted carefully so yeah. that people don't trip and fall easily. Mm. So all those factors are taken into account. Okay, so let's talk about healthcare, because you mentioned it twice now. I think it's one of the most vital parts yes. about this, yes. especially because I know both of my sets of grandparents lived in retirement villages before yeah. they passed on. And one of the greatest assets that we had was the access, and easy access to to healthcare. 100%. When you buy into a retirement village, you need to research the healthcare facilities very carefully because some will offer frail care, some will offer a step down facility, some will have assisted nursing. You need to decide what it is that you're looking for and then yeah. buy accordingly. And you even need to look at the detail of what the frail care comprises. Are there going to be nurses full time? Are they going to be doing chronic medication as and when needed? doing um, their rounds, so to speak, like doctors do in a hospital, yeah. do the nurses do rounds every morning and evening. Yeah. So those sort of details are very important. Okay, so how does it work when you're trying to buy into one of these retirement villages? Because one of my fears, obviously, is that, I mean, are the criteria for an age gap? I don't want to have a young person living in there where I need it for my grandparents or my parents. Yeah. How does that work? So the age has actually dropped quite a lot. You can now get into some retirement villages at the age of 50, which is lovely. So you're young, healthy, vibrant, and you can enjoy this great lifestyle. But there are also different types of ownership. So conventional ownership is full title freehold, where you own the buildings and the land. And then there's sectional title ownership, where there's common property that's owned by the body corporate, and you own your section of the buildings. Oh, that can be either an apartment or a little um, unit on its own. But what's really nice with retirement is some of them have life rights schemes mm. which are more affordable for retirees 
um, but you don't actually acquire ownership of a property per se. You acquire the rights to live, use and enjoy that property for the duration of your lifetime. Okay, so there are multiple ways that you can get involved in, in this. All right, Correct. in terms of the hotspots, I mean, where are the hotspots in our country when it comes to retirement estates? Pretoria's got waterfall estate that's been very popular. The Winelands and Cape Town are very popular. And I'm proud to say that KZN is probably ah. the most popular province at the moment hmm. for retirement because of its climate. True. So you can live in Howick, which is close to the Midlands if you're looking for a country retirement. And then obviously you've got the coastal belt, which is very popular. You can go down the south coast, which is affordable and that's why it's popular and the north coast with its convenience to the, to the airport and all the amenities and Amschlange, excellent hospitals, the beautiful beaches. North Coast is becoming extremely popular mm, for absolutely. retirees. So I, I'm always about the money. I want to know the numbers. Yes, uh, yes. Is buying into a retirement estate an investment still or is it more of an investment in like, oh, I just want to make sure that all these facilities are nearby? There. To be honest, it's one of the best investments you can make. If you look at a waiting list, for retirement villages, it goes on and on and on. Yeah. So you will never be short of tenants. And when you're investing in property, you're looking at your rental returns and you're looking at your capital growth. And both are very good on retirement villages. So it pays you to retire early? 100%. <laughs> Carol, thank you so much. I'm off to retire. There you have it. Retirement estates offer a brilliant lifestyle for retirees and are an excellent investment in a growing market. Now, whether you are nearing retirement age or not, there's never been a better time to enter the Winner Home Grand Prize competition on the private property website to stand a chance to win the multi-million rand home on the Eye of Africa estate. All you have to do is log on to privateproperty.co.za and answer a very easy question. Now listen, after the break, I check in with our design duos to see how green their fingers are. It's good to have you back with us. This is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Now, for their second last challenge, our design duos have had to transform the garden and the patio areas. Now, although they are fairly new to landscape design, they've had great help and support in creating amazing outdoor spaces in the hopes of impressing our Winner Home judges. Now, don't forget that you can also share your thoughts on social media using hashtag Winner Home. And fortunately, I get to have a quick peek at the halfway mark to show you just how these gardens are shaping up. Every space designed by Team Habitat has a completely unexpected, out-of-the-box element. In their garden, they've created a moat where water can flow throughout the outdoor space, which naturally includes their trademark artificial grass. I come bearing gifts, hello, B and Brad. Ah, thank you. But isn't this one of ours? Excuse me, don't be ungrateful. A gift is a gift, all right? Who knows? This is looking so cool and green. The grass is green on the other side. Absolutely. <laughs> no, welcome to our chill area and the garden space. Yes. You don't only get one pet here, but two. Two. <laughs> two for the price of one or two for the price of two? Two for the price of one. I love it. <laughs> all right, so you guys are quite imaginative when it comes to your design. So let's get imaginative for a second here. Describe like a typical day in the life out here. Well, it obviously starts off with sunshine and you'd be in this patio, patio number two, with the green grass, Augusta. It's a Bogotex floor. So if you've got allergies, this is where you'd suntan while looking at the water mm. flowing, feeling like you're on the beach with your umbrella that's still coming. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing shade onto the patio and the neighbors. <laughs> Let's hope the judges don't do the same. Let's yeah. go do a quick tour, right? <laughs> yes. So this is like the moat, I'd imagine. So if you guys were in prison, this would be... Your escape route. Well, yeah. if you've got businesses that you just want to throw into the lake, that's your lake. It's okay. just a bit shallow for the kids. <laughs> yeah, we want it to look like a lake, so we're going to be putting pebbles in, yes. different colour pebbles. Absolutely. We might create a pattern inside there. And we're probably going to be painting the edges the same colour as the home. Just to tie in this whole moat and puzzle in with the structure of the house. Mm. What I will give you guys a thumbs up for is how much you've managed to utilise the whole space. You've incorporated quite a lot here, but what what about the actual nature side of things? There's going to be real grass here, and on this side, we, lots of trees. We've One, got three two, trees coming. Yes. yes. And the front of the house. Yes, there'll be a lot of plants there as well. Right, let's move to patio number one. Well, at the halfway mark, a lot of construction has been done. Looks very good. Are you going to be finished in time? 
Sure. By the grace of Mother Nature, I hope so. We just have to do some tiling. We're going to bulge text this frame in that grass that you saw there. And then the fireplace is coming in. Yeah, there's an awning coming over here, so we'll be shaded yes. next time around. The furniture needs to come in. Table, couches. And of course the water. We need to just fill up with that dam. <laughs> yeah. Well, keep the action flowing. Good luck, you two. Uh, thank, uh, you. thank you. Modern and African Seek have been the guiding words for Team VC's design indoors, and they're aiming to create the same aesthetic outdoors with their garden and patio. How's my two wins in a row team doing? What's up? Hey, Hi, Danilo. Danilo. Right, what is the plan out in your patio? So, obviously, we're the team that loves colour, yep. so we want to bring that out here onto the patio. So what we're going to do is introduce some bold colours with our plants, and also with our accessories. We are creating more of an outdoor living space because if we don't have a dining, so we, we, we're going to have to paint this table to match with the rugged concrete kind of like theme color and have like the black chairs, but a little bit of low seating. It's more of a relaxing space. And we've also brought in a water feature. Yeah. So the sound will also help calm you as well as our beautiful Zen garden, which is behind the house mm. in a lovely shady area. So you can go there and unwind if necessary as well. How's the budget looking? <laughs> Well, I think the budget is, we're quite okay. We're not over budget. Uh, Craig has helped us a lot by giving us like free plants. So I think we covered our budget. You've already won two challenges in a row. So in order to win the third, the judges are going to really need to see some incredible design from both of you. So what is the plan out here that's going to wow them? Miss Van Rolf said less is more. So we're going to improve the space by doing a little bit of less complicated things, but more functionality to the outdoor space. So this garden, it's going to be amazing, honestly speaking. Basically, you guys are going to be keeping up with the Joneses then. I think the Joneses are going to have to keep up with us. <laughs> the Joneses in this case are Team House and Leisure, who have the most exposed garden of the three. Their design plays on natural shapes while maintaining a minimalist feel. Still a bit of a war zone. <laughs> I'm actually worried of where I can and can't stand. I'm like standing like a mine or something. No, no, please don't step on those. Oh, why? That's for wet. Yes, that's for ah. wet. You guys have literally taken Stone Quarter to a whole new level. We did. You haven't really been to Eye of Africa until you get to Unit 48. <laughs> <laughs> so what we basically tried doing is we kept it really simple, but then tried to create like focal points, this side, this side, and a planting area on the other side of the house. And then what's delaying things a bit is the pond because the cladding is taking a little bit longer. But then once that's done, it's going to flow like a well-oiled machine. What about the moolah? You guys are running out of money really quickly. So have you kind of applied that minimalist theme from indoors all the way into outdoors to keep the costs low? That is true. We are going minimal and it starts with our furniture. It's very minimal, Scandinavian inspired and it's designer, so that actually ups the value of the property. And also we've got a sculpture, which is by Swissom Cabela, that's coming in, and I think that will help with the aesthetic of the house. Of all three design teams, you've got the most exposed outside of your home. So how have you managed to incorporate both privacy and design aesthetic out here? Danilo, we're famous for no privacy. So we're still trying to keep the garden open plan so that when you're coming from at any point of the quarter, you can actually see everything that's here. And we'd like to showcase our pond, which we think is the only one in the stone quarter. Mm, might or might not be true. I may have some inside information as to what the other contestants are doing. You're not the only ones. Even though our pond may not be the only one in Stone Quarter, we have a secret weapon that we can show you. Aha, uh -huh, you must be the secret weapon. Daniela, this is Aldo. So what we have here, it is a state-of-the-art irrigation system which is going to simplify the homeowner's life in terms of maintaining the garden. Nice. So Aldo, how does it work? We are from Free Dry Water Links. We manufacture all the CPEX products on this system and we import down to irrigation from America. It's an automatic irrigation system with a Wi-Fi enabled controller that links with the airport's weather station, taking down your temperatures for the day, rain and everything, and that links down to how much water you're going to put down, when you have to water and when you don't have to water and we will save you a lot of time and money. And in terms of the installation, what can we expect? Okay, so the Matic pop-up irrigation system, everything's buried underground, so when it sprinkles, you will see it popping up. When it's not in use, you won't see it. It's installed all over the garden, around the edges of the house, and it sprays sprinkler to sprinkler to get a good coverage so you don't have any dry spots in your garden. Now, I think this idea is what's going to sell you guys to the judges, so well done, good decision. 
I'm gonna do like a tree and leave you to it. Go and bark some orders. Each of our designed heroes believes their garden house is a magic four-leaf clover that'll bring them luck. However, who is really going to feel lucky when they have to finish those gardens on time for judging on Friday the 13th? Yikes. But they say it's lucky for some, and certainly you are lucky enough to only have to wait 24 hours before we reveal the completed gardens. That's right. We are back again tomorrow at 4 p.m. for the great garden reveals, and we'll find out who's the real green thumb among our design duos. Can Team House and Leisure pull off some magic with their budget-wise 15,000 Rand allocation? Or will Team Habitat's risky 40,000 Rand splurge pay off in their quest for that 10,000 Rand advantage in the final challenge? Find out tomorrow. So from me, Danilo Aquisa, I'll have to see you then. Good night and bye. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.